today we are going to look at how to build a laser communicator. This is the first video in a series of three because we're going to do this in three steps. But the first video will be on the concept. What exactly are we trying to accomplish and what is each part of the circuit going to have to do? The second video is going to be a design where we actually design each part of the circuit. And then finally we will have a build video where we take that design and build it into a working laser communicator. Now Kip K has a video on building a laser communicator and he uses parts that might be a little hard to get because he buys off the shelf parts from Radio Shack and strings them together and ends up with a working laser communicator. That's a great video if you want to just uh, see how to do it, but this video is going to be more, not just how to build it, but going from the concept through the design and through the final build. So let's get started. First of all, just exactly what are we trying to accomplish? We are trying to accomplish sending a laser beam from one place to another, a transmitter to a receiver, and then sending information over that laser beam such that I can speak into a microphone on one end and you hear it in a speaker on the other. So here's the basic idea. We have a microphone. That's going to go to some mystery circuit that's going to power a laser. That laser beam is going to go through the air, hopefully in a more straight line than that, to some kind of a receiver, to some kind of mystery circuit, I guess they could all be one thing, and finally out through a loudspeaker so that you can hear on this loudspeaker what I say on the other end. So let's start over here and see what we have to deal with and what we're going to have to do along each stage to make this work. And we'll start with the microphone. Just because it's easier to describe, I think, than other types of microphones, let's work with the dynamic microphone. A dynamic microphone starts with a coil of wire that is attached to a diaphragm so that when I speak, if we imagine that this is my microphone, I talk into it, that diaphragm is going to be hit with the vibrations in the air, the sound waves from my mouth, and it's going to cause that diaphragm to vibrate. And because the vibrations from my voice vibrate anywhere from 300 times every second to about 3,000 times every second, or from about 300 hertz to about 3 kilohertz, that diaphragm is going to be vibrating the same way. So it will be vibrating a combination of frequencies at the same time, anywhere from 300 times per second to 3,000 times per second making a very complex voltage come out of that microphone. So the microphone, love that sound, don't we? So the microphone has a diaphragm attached to a coil. That coil is in a magnetic field. So here we have a magnet. May not be arranged exactly like this, but you get the idea. While that microphone vibrates, it sets up electrical currents in the coil that attempt to flow out here into a circuit. Well, let's just complete the circuit for the fun of it, put a little resistor there so we have a complete circuit. So basically, when that diaphragm is moving one way, current is going to flow one direction, and when the diaphragm is moving the other way, current is going to flow the other direction. Now the direction that the current flows depends on the orientation of the magnet and the coil, so it could go either way at either time. But let's just assume that when the diaphragm is moving away from me, the current flows in this direction. And when the diaphragm is moving towards me, the current flows in that direction. So when the current is flowing in this direction, we're going to get a voltage across our load here, which will be the rest of our circuit. That's going to be positive to negative. And when it's flowing the opposite direction, that polarity will reverse. So we get a constantly changing polarity out here. And the voltage is going to follow a curve where it's going to go more and more positive, back down to zero, more and more negative, back up to zero, and it's going to repeat this over and over again. Now I'm showing a pretty simple wave here. I would get that if I could sing a pure tone, which I could not possibly. But let's say we had a tone generator and produced a 1000 hertz tone, we would get something like this where it goes up and down, down and up, up and down, down and up, a thousand times every second. So as I'm speaking into it, of course, this voltage is going to track my voice, which might be something more complicated. It looks, who knows, maybe something more like that. But the point is, 
that this voltage is going to track the vibrations of my voice. When Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, he called those voice-shaped currents. As a matter of fact, his working telephone transmitter was basically this, a diaphragm, a magnet, and we've got our voice-shaped currents. So that's what we get from the microphone. Somehow we have to get that to power a laser beam. So what does the laser need? Well, coming out of the microphone, first of all, we have a wave. I'll just draw a simple tone that's going to positive, negative, positive, negative. So it's reversing polarity. It's going up to a voltage, down to a lower voltage, up to a voltage, down to a lower voltage. And it's going to be reversing polarity thousands of hundreds or thousands of times a second. Somehow we need to power a laser diode with that. So we'll use a diode laser because they're cheap and easy to find. You might be able to cannibalize one from a laser pointer. I tried that once. I actually made it work, but it was a very delicate thing to do. But you can buy laser modules fairly cheaply. We'll look at that when we actually start doing the build. But that's going to be a laser diode, which is a light emitting diode that simply is shaped and made in such a way that it produces a laser beam. So all we need to do is somehow get this laser beam to do the same thing that we have going on here. I have my voice making voice shaped vibrations in the air. The microphone changes that into voice shaped voltages. I just need to now turn that into a voice shaped light. So we have to send this to the laser diode I guess I should put a little star in here to indicate that's a laser diode there. Get that in there to get that laser to do something useful. Well, the easiest thing to do will be to use amplitude modulation. So if we go back to what the microphone is doing, as the diaphragm moves away from me, the voltage goes up. As the diaphragm comes closer to me, the voltage goes down. Let's try to make a circuit that will take the laser diode, and when the microphone diaphragm is moving away from me, it gets brighter. And when the diaphragm from the microphone is moving closer to me, it gets dimmer. So now we have a brightness profile, brighter, dimmer, brighter, dimmer, brighter, dimmer. That perfectly follows what's going on over here. So I have this complex wave shape that has frequencies from 300 hertz to 3000 hertz going into the laser diode. And now I have the light getting brighter and dimmer, 3300 to 3000 times every second. So now I have voice shaped light. And that would be amplitude modulation. It's changing the brightness or the amplitude of this laser to track my voice and give us a laser beam with voice-shaped light, if you will. So just a quick recap of where we are now. We have voice-shaped pressure waves hitting the microphone. The microphone turns that into voice-shaped voltages. And I want to get voice-shaped light from laser diode. So let's assume that the microphone at the top peak is producing 0.1 volt, a tenth of a volt, and at the bottom, minus 0.1 volt. So what's coming out of the microphone peaks at 0.1 volt positive, minus peak is 0.1 volt negative, so what is that? That is going to be 0.2 volts peak to peak. So that's what we have to deal with, two tenths of a volt from the top to the bottom, and what does the laser need? Well, the laser diode, I don't know its exact parameters yet. I haven't looked that up. We're just in the concept phase right now. So here's our laser diode. Is there a special symbol for laser diode? Let's put a little star in here to represent that being a laser diode. If it's like a typical diode, it's going to require a DC voltage of probably around one volt to get it to where it's in the linear region. In other words, as we increase the voltage across this diode, it's going to turn on and start producing laser light. And as we increase the voltage, it's going to produce more and more. But at some point, it's going to get to where, as we increase the voltage, we get a proportional increase in light. So at first, it's going to be nonlinear. As we increase the voltage, we get a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of light. Then it's going to go around a corner where it's kind of exponential. But eventually, we get to a point where, as we change our voltage, it's going to be a linear change in brightness. And let's assume that that is going to be at a minimum of one volt. So we have to have at least one volt across there. And let's say our maximum voltage is going to be oh, 1.5 volts. 
So maximum voltage of 1.5 volts. We have to keep it within that range there. So this is centered on 0 volts here. Goes up to plus 0.1 down to minus 0.1. We want to shift that so that it's up about halfway between these two. So I need to make the voltage at this point about 1.25 volts. And so I need some kind of circuitry that's going to convert this going to plus 0.1 volt down to minus 0.1 volt to convert that to where it goes up to about 1, oh, not 0, 1 point, let's see, it's going to be a tenth of a volt, so 3, 5 volts, and down to a minimum of 1.15 volts. So once again, we're centered on 1.25 volts. And so when this goes up a tenth of a volt, it pushes that voltage up a tenth of a volt. When this goes down a tenth of a volt, it pushes that voltage down a tenth of a volt. So we need some kind of a circuitry that's going to convert this. It's going to shift this voltage to instead of going to 0.1 volt, minus 0.1, plus 0.1, minus 0.1, it's going to go to plus 1.35, plus 1.15. Notice we are still 2 or 0.2 volts peak to peak. In other words, our voltage plus 1.35 plus 1.15, notice there's still 2 tenths of a volt between them. So, 2 tenths of a volt between the peaks here, 2 tenths of a volt between the peaks here. So nothing's changed except the center voltage. So we're going to make a circuit that centers that on 1.25 volts so that it's centered where we want it on that diode. So that's the first thing we need is some kind of circuitry that's going to shift this over. All right, what do we need next? Well, we need a higher voltage swing. So once we go through that mystery circuit, which we'll just call a voltage shifter, how about VS for voltage shifter? Now we've got a voltage that's plus 1.3, that's a 2, 35 volts to plus, or down low, down as low as 1.15 volts. And we've got to get that swing to be even more. So that'll turn on the laser diode. Terrible little drawing here. That will turn it on, but the brightness changes aren't going to be enough to suit us. So I'm going to have a little tiny brightness changes. We need to get a big brightness change. So what are we going to do? We're going to run that through an amplifier. To boost that up so that now this voltage swing, we want to get our maximum swing as possible. So it's now going to swing up to 1.5 volts and down to 1.0 volts. So we have to amplify the input, which is a wave coming in at 1.35 maximum and minimum of 1.15, and boost it up so that it's boosting up all the way to 1.5 and down to 1. So we've got to increase the range of that so that brightness of that laser diode is swinging as far as it possibly can when we are talking as loud as we talk. So that's the circuitry we're going to need there, and simply this is going to go to the laser diode. Pretty simple, in concept at least. But uh, can we do this with a op amp? Well, I think we're going to need more than the 30 or 40 milliamps we get from an op amp to get any decent brightness out of here. So we probably will have to send this to a second power amplifier. So we'll probably have to chain it through two amplifiers. However, it seems I remember there's a circuit somewhere that looks like an op amp. You use it like an op amp. You do the feedback to control the gain like an op amp, but it can produce up to 100 milliamps, I think. Your assignment, should you decide to accept it, is to find out what that circuit is. And so instead of using an op amp and then a power amplifier, which maybe we should build just for practice, but if you want to cheat, we can get that circuit that can produce enough power just from the amplifier. So let's see if we can find that circuit. So anyway, that's the uh, the business end of the transmitter, a microphone, 
some kind of a voltage shifting circuit to shift that voltage up into a positive range so it never goes uh, negative. So it always stays between the voltages we want to operate this diode. And then an amplifier to make that voltage swing the maximum voltage swing going from the minimum of 1 volt to the maximum of 1.5 and getting a nice voltage here that's voice shaped voltage that will give us a laser beam that is a voice shaped laser beam where as I talk into the microphone when the diaphragm moves away that laser beam gets brighter as the microphone diaphragm moves closer the laser beam gets dimmer and that brightness and dimness follows the contour of my voice. Now for the receiving end. Oh and by the way we don't have to do this with a laser. We could do it with a regular diode. The only difference is the laser already gives us a nice pinpoint beam. If we use just a regular photodiode, or excuse me, a regular light emitting diode, we would have to use a lens to collimate that beam. In other words, here's our diode. We would have to put a lens out here at just the right place so as the light shines out from there. It's bent into parallel lines or a straight column, calling collimated. That's your word for the day. Collimate that beam so it concentrates on the other end where we'd have another lens to focus it on the photodiode. Uh, using a laser, we eliminate the lenses because we can just shine the laser straight out there. The beam is already collimated for us. Although a lens on this end will mean we don't have to have that laser beam pointed right down the middle. If we miss, let's say our laser beam comes in here, the lens will bend it down. So might be a good idea to have a lens at the other end anyway, but not necessary. But let's see what we need at the other end. We're going to start out with a photodiode. And I'm going to draw that upside down because we want it reverse biased. I keep drawing it the wrong way, don't I? I want to draw that upside down because we want that reverse biased. Pretty simple circuit here. And we have to send enough current through here, so there's going to be a resistor here, the only component we're looking at so far. That's going to set this up at just the right voltage. It's going to be reverse biased. And when that laser beam hits it, as that laser beam gets brighter, this becomes more conductive. So more current flows and this voltage will go down. And as that laser beam gets brighter, this becomes less conductive, less current, the voltage goes up. That's going to be 180 degrees out of phase, but that doesn't matter. So now we have a voltage that's going up and down. Hey, just like we had after the amplifier. So coming off the... Uh, Photodiode is a voltage going up and down, once again tracking my voice. As the microphone diaphragm goes away from me, this voltage goes down. As the microphone diaphragm comes toward me, the voltage goes up. Yeah, that's reverse of what I said before because that's what this would do. But now we have this voice-shaped voltage again. All we need to do is send that through an amplifier and to a speaker. And once again, it's probably going to take two stages, probably a simple op amp will do for the first stage and then a power amplifier with a couple of transistors in the second stage except that circuit I was talking about before as long as you don't need too much out of the speaker I think it will produce enough to run that speaker so we could cheat and find that circuit or maybe there's several of them find the right one where we only have to have one circuit set the feedback just like an op amp and right straight to the speaker might have to have a few capacitors for filtering or something like that in there but a pretty simple circuit. So that is the concept. So once again a recap of the whole circuit. We need a microphone to pick up the sound waves. That's going to produce voice shaped currents which we need to offset from 0 volts to 1.25 volts or whatever is necessary for that particular laser diode. So we have to have some kind of an offset circuit a voltage shifting circuit, and then an amplifier, and finally to our laser diode. And then the receiver is going to be a photodiode, and to an amplifier, and to a speaker. And it just occurred to me that we have the same problem over here that we have over here, and that is that we have some DC offset that we have to deal with. Here, we had to add some DC offset. Here, we need to take it away, and what I mean is that our voltage coming out of this amplifier is going to be alternating current, which is what our speaker wants, 
but it's not going to be centered on zero volts. So what we need for the speaker is some voltage that goes above and below zero volts to some voltage. Don't know what it is, but to some voltage. Let's call it x volts. And back to minus x volts. Symmetrically, meaning that it's pure alternating current with no DC offset. What we have going in there is, well, I don't know if it might go a little bit negative or not, but this is not zero volts. It is going to be somewhere, well, it looks like about, well, I don't know, it depends on the biasing of this photodiode. So this voltage here will be something greater than zero volts. It's not a seven, that's a greater than. So something greater than zero volts, and we have to have a circuit that's going to offset that back down so that our speaker gets a good symmetrical voltage or current that equally goes above and below zero volts. So we have to have another voltage shifting circuit of some sort over on this end. But that's the finished circuit. Microphone, something to shift the voltage up to the 1.25 volts that we think we'll need. Probably might be a different voltage. We'll find out when we do some research. To an amplifier, to our laser diode. That shoots across over to our photodiode where we have a little bias circuit that picks up the signal, converts it back to an electrical signal as we described before, an amplifier, some kind of a voltage shifting circuit to get this back down to where there's no DC to operate the speaker. And that is the finished circuit that we are going to work on. And your assignment is to take this concept and think about how you might build this. And then in the next video, we'll actually do a design, maybe more than one design, to see how we might go about making this happen. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.